Hello there, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Happy day to you. I hope everybody's doing really, really wonderful. And I did it. I opened. I didn't get choked up too bad. But here we go. Again, we want to thank everybody for their support over on Patreon. Unique videos, exclusives that go up over there a couple times a week. And so Mount Etna is showing off what she can do, not to be outdone by other events, including a very unusual earthquake uh, phenomenon going on in New Jersey, which we're going to talk about. Smoke rings. So Cindy's been channeling about these smoke rings uh, because, again, this is what makes us a different channel. It's it's not going to be the case. Well, here's your link for this because, you know, here's what this this particular scientist or this particular expert saying when there's nothing we trust. And, yeah, we really don't trust much when it comes to <laughs> anything uh, that's out there in the Internet. We always go within first and feel into things. And uh, Cindy was getting information on Aetna. Right. Well, it, you know, it's very, very curious. And scientists are currently debating on why she's able to do this. And kind of when I went inside the volcano and took a look, uh, the best I can translate is there's different temperatures of the lava. There's different tubes of the lava. And depending on the temperature, the tube and how that's coming up through which tube it can make these rings. So what I picked up is it's it's new lava. It's new development. It's, it's a different lava tube that's moving that doesn't normally move. So that there's a different temperature here. So things are going on. It's very curious. Uh, I, I love it. I mean, it's beautiful. I look at the rings and I think... Those are a lot of fun, and I think she's having fun, too, showing off, but hopefully she won't get too feisty. She's blowing rings as good as Gandalf's, if you guys ever yes. watch Lord of the Rings there. Check this out. Listen, listen to what he actually says. This is on Fox News. Let's start this earthquake in 140 years, John. Look at all that. And it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, 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 what did he say? He said, he, let's listen. 40 years, John. Look at all that. And it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. The eclipse earthquake's coming on Monday, he says. Now, does he just mean the avalanche humans that are gathering to watch the eclipse that may be a rain out in, in a lot of areas? We'll see. Uh, we'll see what manifests there. Or does he mean they're planning an earthquake? Because this one, uh, from what we have gotten, is absolutely artificially uh, done. And what amazed me, but but I was happy to see, as I'm looking uh, through X on different comments on different posts about the swarm, and even on other channels talking, there's so many people that are saying, "Oh, you you mean the uh, the Chinese earthquake, or you mean you know the manufactured?" The, uh, people are picking up on the technology and and the fact that what we're seeing is not natural, and they think a lot of people are getting much more intuitive and much more psychic. And I really do think that that's going to just explode after the eclipse. Well, this is what the controllers are concerned about is people picking up on that, people being able to see um, past their BS veil that they that they put up and people being able to see the truth. And that's exactly what happens during an awakening. It's like you you become, in essence, a magnet for the truth. You feel it. You move toward it. And they, this is so natural for humans. It's like a flower blooming. There's not much they can do but create chaos. Absolutely. So let's look. And we're up to 29. So, wow. 28, 29. Let's see if we are we still showing that 4.8. We still are, which might have been a 5.5 according to the first reports that came out. And, uh, wow, you know, that that's a lot. 28 aftershocks. <clears throat> that's really interesting too because it, it all depends on on the geology and where you're located what the material is like when you look at these quakes the vast majority is at five kilometers depth that's what they're reporting anyway it may be true it may not be true i don't trust them do you but anyway 4.7 the original 5.0 almost all of them except for a couple 
Uh, there was an 8.5. This is a 3.8. And then a 9.0 uh, kilometer deep at 2.5 magnitude. So, you know, what's really going on here? Are they blasting it from below? Are they using some sort of satellite-based te technology? What Cindy was getting was the feeling of a thump, 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 like somebody tapping on it sort of well yeah i mean a, a, a tapping type of of technology something to activate it something you know a stop and go stop and go stop and go technology to see if they can get it to move more um also getting the feeling that it's they understand with this technology it could take time to get it to trigger uh so we'll we'll have to see my hope is and what i'm putting out there <clears throat> is that it's simply going to fade away and let's not forget this uh, <clears throat> with uh, Elon Musk. It, we He put up that uh, tweet, you know, Escape from New York just the other day about that that really cheesy movie. I kind of felt that was telling too since he tends to do this. I mean, his posts, he, he, they're not meaningless. He, yeah, he telegraphs He things. telegraphs constantly. And sometimes it really honestly shocks me uh, how much he, he telegraphs. You know, okay, well, let's look at what he's talking about. The, the fall of civilizations, the Sumerians, rise and fall of the first civilization, first Anunnaki-based civilization. There were many benevolent uh, civilizations well before that, but Elon is all about the Anunnaki and the Ujiji. And everything about him is is really about the real controllers. So it's it's just obvious. And of course, he's always calling you know the everything going on with the current system out. Oh hell on earth! Look at the uh, firings here. Yeah, you know hell on earth. He's he's saying that in more ways than one. And interesting that he's showing the rockets. You know, instead of saying something like, look at what we're doing, you know, we're, we're whatever, going to conquer the stars or however he wants to, Mars and then the rest of the solar system is all going to be, you know, humanities for expansion and then onward to other solar systems. Now he's showing the rocket and he's saying hell on earth in regards to rocket launches. He telegraphs everything if you really want to know what's coming next just follow elon because he can't keep his mouth shut but yeah <laughs> he's like the little boy that knows i know what you're getting for christmas yeah absolutely you know so it's it's all being telegraphed and this was one thing that was really hitting me this morning uh this is a damn failure in in russia which we talked about and this is, um, it's devastating. Uh, there's definitely lives lost. They found three bodies in flooded areas, over 2,400 homes, 3,000 plus adjacent areas submerged, thousands of people evacuated. Um, it, it's a big failure. Think about when the New Madrid goes. Think about when the San Andreas goes, the, the dams that the, we've, we've been worried about before and Cascadia because you know, uh, one, two, three, my bet is three. I think they're all going in this year. Now, hopefully I'm totally wrong. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully they're not able to trigger. Um, I, again, why do we get prophecies? Well, there, it's twofold. I, I do think they want to tell us what they're going to do. So our consciousness helps to manifest it. And then at the same time, I do think we get warnings uh, from the other side in a positive manner saying this is what they're planning on doing. In case you don't know, you might want to get out of the way because you live right under a dam or you live right on a fault or you're right next to uh, a military base or you're right next to you know maybe a, a gas storage facility or an oil storage facility and things are going to get hot literally it's a warning in one sense and then at the same time the controllers use it uh to create one of our um one of our uh regulars uh flojo tube i see them commenting a lot was talking about 
CERN, Kernunos, and Shiva, you know, because everybody knows and we've seen the big Shiva statue out, out by CERN and saying, <clears throat> you know, CERN is short for Kernunos, who is thought to be another um, representation of Shiva. And again, it, it's their forces of nature in so many ways. And, and Shiva, ultimately, we can refer to that as, as the consciousness behind the creation and you could tap into uh, the mantra of Shiva, for instance, to again, change timelines. This is what they're doing. And when you read the Hindu stories over and over and over, you'll be hit with things like, well, this Asura, wait a minute, Asura, isn't that the demons? Yes, this Asura was doing uh, daily devotions to Shiva in order to get a boon because both the good and the bad, you know, both those that have intentions of destruction and ego and, and raising themselves over others and subjecting others to punishment, as well as the benevolent beings that are trying to uh, keep some sort of peace and, and harmony in the universe can get boons from the natural order of things, can get boons from, from the matrix, the original matrix, the real matrix. You, it, and a boon is a blessing, uh, just so you know. So when the dark side is doing things to Shiva, they are trying to rewrite things the way they want to write them. It's not that Shiva is, is a, uh, a demon. Uh, these are consciousness streams that are actually uh, above the, the level of this manufactured original matrix. Because they're above it, you can affect the matrix utilizing their energies and consciousness. And it's the same thing with, with the archangels, uh, the real archangels and archangelic forces. You can call on those forces for protection. You can also call on them to control other elemental forces below them <clears throat> because in so many ways they are um, I think you know you could say they're engineers uh, when it when it comes to creating universes uh, I think that's how I would probably choose to word it so it doesn't mean that you know uh, something like a Shiva is a demon or a demonic energy it can be used for good or bad and you you learn that openly in certain magical schools uh which again magical there is real magic and that's just con conforming this reality to your will and your intent the white quote-unquote magic is is always going to be geared towards the betterment of the situation for all with, with harm to none, uh, and whereas the dark is going to be all about the self, and then there's every shade of gray in between. And the reality is we're all doing magic all the time, whether we know it or not. Um, I, I think what they leave out of a lot, a lot of things in this, in this realm, in this mainstream, is that we are the creators of this world. Our intention is so very important. And if you're extremely diligent, you can test this for yourself by sitting down, having serious intent, and then be open to the universe for, for answers. And this is something that when you're serious about it, you can start to see it, you can start to do it, you start to write it down, you see it in black and white, and you really start to show yourself, wow, I am a creator. This is very curious, very, very strange how things work. Absolutely. And so the understanding that the, the system, the political system, the control system in play is doing absolutely the darkest black magic constantly. And they are utilizing people often th that they're utilizing the consciousness of people often that think that they are serving the light, but they are being distorted and twisted into sending their intentions in exactly the manner that the dark side wants them to without their knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and this is really how they maintain control. 
It's very unfortunate. It's very, very sad how they how they do that. So we have this uh, Russia dam um, has burst, and now we're looking at the aftermath. And we did cover this yesterday, but I was looking at what's going on today. And, and for me, what I see is very much a, a tit for tat. We just, you know, had a had a barge that was kind of rammed into a really uh, big, um, a really big <laughs> bridge, a huge, huge bridge. And now we have this going on and I think it's um, very, very silent. It's like a silent war and it's going to be silent until they announce it on mainstream. And this is just, uh, well, I guess we can call it regular flooding due to heavy rains. This has uh, caused the Ohio River to burst through its banks on Thursday. The river cre crested uh, at almost 42 feet. As you can see, this is in Virginia. Massive flooding underway uh, in, in Virginia. You know, it's been a all or nothing uh, type of thing in this world for, well, going back to 2017 with that first eclipse. So be very aware when Cascadia, when San Andreas, and when uh, the New Madrid go, there's going to be a bunch of a bunch of dams that go, and there's going to be a lot of flooding. And there was comments, too, again, about people having dreams of flooding. So pay attention to your dreams in these times, because this is the higher self and your guides communicating with you. Listen carefully when you wake up. Go grab a pen and paper and start writing down your impressions. You will probably be amazed at the messages that you get. And heavy rains and flooding wiping out schools in Kenya as well. In Africa, there's several locations now that are heading towards starvation due to conflict and also because of the nonstop flooding that we've seen. Now, there's the potential for several wars uh, breaking out. That will ultimately all connect into one big war, and this is over in Azerbaijan and Armenia. Firefights breaking out over there. Of course, we're watching Serbia and Kosovo as well. It's And now, uh, also, um, there's a little tiff going on between Mexico and Ecuador. Uh, again, because uh, of uh, an issue with the... Um, consulate basically uh, trying to hide somebody and so they're they're having a little row when when this war when WW3 is is over it's not over it, because the revolutions are only probably gonna really be starting at, at that point in time they are gonna start during the war they already are but it's after the war because people are waking up and they're going to try to draft people. Every nation will try to draft people and send them off to, you know, be the uh, the red heifers, which, by the way, I, I you know, we hear that that might happen on the 8th, you know, and, and that wouldn't surprise me at all doing that blood sacrifice on the 8th under an eclipse. Because truly, again, the system is satanic. There are demonic energies involved. But perhaps the biggest demons are literally in uh, the religious and political systems themselves. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, the word that I saw was allegedly they are allegedly going to do this uh, ritual sacrifice on the 8th, which, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all at, in, in the way things flow and how they do things. So, and then we have this rocket barrage reported from Lebanon towards northern Israel. And, and we're looking at this, and this is just never, ever, ever. Yeah. It, it's just nonstop. And, you know, this is, again, not Iran striking yet. They say that is coming, but it feels pretty obvious by now they're waiting to the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, if it comes before then, I'll be a little bit surprised. Maybe it'll come on the 7th, uh, you know, on the eve of, but no. I, it's the 8th, and it's also the end of Ramadan. So, you know, that's that's what everything is timing on. Everything is so layered there's so many layers to this that that's another reason why i can't see this just all stalling and nothing happening for like a year because it's all about timing and it's all in the the stars so to speak the uss george washington is is heading uh circumnavigating south america 
with port visits in Brazil, Chile, and Peru en route to the Indo-Pacific. Um, Brazil is part of BRICS, uh, so we'll, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go and when the war actually starts, because this, this could end up changing a blink of an eye. And here you have so much coming out. We understand the true conspiracies that have been going on are committed by <laughs> those that even labeled the term conspiracy in the first place. It's really the, the system itself within the system and people like Whitmer and, <laughs> and so many others that have been conspiring to basically uh, sacrifice Babylon the Great, which is us, the U.S. and NATO. And this is how they, they've been doing it. And it's all coming out, obviously. It, 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 it's so, it, it feels naive to you and, and, and I that anybody would trust any sort of process, whether it's You know, the news giving it to us straight, that never happens. Politicians keeping their promises, that never happens. Unless it's a negative promise and involves more bloodshed. No, you know, it, it's all been a ruse. It's all been an illusion. They want you to think humans have really been making the decisions, but it's never been humans. And last night I woke up uh, screaming to Cindy And it was because I thought <laughs> I was outside looking up at the sky. And what I saw was going straight across from east to west. Um, something that was just like um, what Nostradamus had described as, you know, a bearded star or trailing sparks. Um, so it, it looked to me to be some sort of missile way up high and it was traveling very, very fast, like way faster than like if you look up in the sky and you follow a jet, you know, that jet just kind of moseys along. Well, this was traveling like real fast <clears throat> because it's like I saw it, I, I looked away and looked back and it had moved so much more uh, quickly than what I expected. So this just hits me that, you know, again, I do think we're going to see a strike on the U.S. and, and on other NATO nations uh, in the relatively near future. And I just wanted to share that with you guys again. So be prepared. Know your surroundings and know, know what targets are, are around your area. You know, what, I, what I've noticed is really helpful to have old maps. And they've really moved us from regular maps and being able to read them when we were younger in school to relying on the GPS. Do not rely on your GPS because they can jam them, they can recalibrate them, and they can reprogram them, and, you know, they could just have everybody drive to some FEMA camp <laughs> if they want to. <laughs> so don't rely on the GPS. Pull out some old maps. Get with your, get with your elders, your grandfathers, Um, grandmothers and figure out the old roads uh, figure out the old roads where you're around in case you do need to get out of your area wherever you are um, just don't rely on the new technology because that's set up to lead so many people astray in a million different ways you know I, I forget which one it was but some governmental agency had a whole bunch and you guys will probably remember of old vehicles like 80s and earlier that were pre-computer chip um, just stored away and it's like why are they storing them away why are they doing work on uh, these really old vehicles uh, I think it's because they expect technology to take things out in in many areas and they, they want to be able to still move Um, freely and have those that are uh, working for the government move freely, uh, at least those that are part of the plan. So, you know, again, keep that in mind. Um, the likelihood of some sort of uh, EMP type thing is, is high, although what we see is something different than a typical EMP. Uh, a different sort of technology that literally uses the ground to fry things because ultimately after this everything you've already seen the tendency to go wi-fi and cloud right and less and less hard lines 
that's part of the shift too. Everything will be traveling through the air, no need for any sort of cables. Um, because also that does wreak havoc with our physical systems and it disrupts us. It does. So, I mean, the things that we have seen in our visions, in our dreams, are, are not pretty. They are new technologies, so we'll have to uh, wait and see how things unfold. Just be prepared. Have backups to your backups. Um, live your life. I have fun. Don't don't let all of this prepping ruin your life. You know, unless you love prepping, then that's different. You know, but definitely do things you love. Do things you love, like this guy here. Yeah, this this reminds me of Rama because he can jump like a mile high, and he's got a similar build there, built for speed. Absolutely. So again, guys, thank you for being part of this family. Stay prepared. Look forward to your comments. Please do you know, share what you're seeing out there and what you think important. Much love. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.